Hello, everybody, and welcome back to the WTF1 podcast, pre-Australia edition. Now, the first burning thing on your mind right now is that there is no Tom Bellingham, the founder. He has disappeared, um, but he's away, and you know we can give him as much grief as we want. But we're just gonna we're just gonna do a good job. Myself and Katie, the WTF1 author, very orange today. Yeah, look at this. I've got my good day or good day. That sounds so British. Good, good day. day, good day, Aussie um, t-shirt on today. You are full of. Danny Rick hype for this week. Yeah, I've even got my Danny Rick mug with him doing a little shoey on it. So available on the WTF One yeah. store if you want to go yes. check out that or any other merch. Uh, I am not wearing WTF One merch. I'm actually wearing a Masters top to celebrate uh, the golf that's on this week. There you go. Bit of insight for those wondering if I like golf. Right. Okay. So let's talk about, firstly, we won a Best Motorsport Podcast Award at the Sports Podcast Awards, which I just wanted to let you know. I think we've already told you, but I wanted to tell you again because we love you very much. Thank you so much for being a part of this podcast and listening to our beautiful waffle uh, that we provide to you every single episode. Now, let's talk about the Australian Grand Prix, shall we, Katie? Let's, Let's dive straight in to what we expect to see in Melbourne. Now, the first thing, we did a video about it, but let's talk about the new track changes because a lot of you came in with some questions. Uh, The first one being at Nuanced Humour asks, do you think DRS Chicken will still play a part in the Grand Prix given there's only one detection point for every pair of DRS zones? So yeah, there is two two detection points for four DRS zones this weekend. Four, the first time in its history, we have four DRS zones. Do I think... Or do we think DRS chicken will still play a part? For me, I don't know. It's I don't think it'll be DRS chicken <laughs> as such. No, I don't. I, I don't. Well, it's, it's a predict. Like literally, Formula One is always about what do we reckon? It's <laughs> Who knows? <laughs> uh, but for me, I'm not sure DRS chicken will play a part as much, just purely because there's so much DRS that is it even worth playing such a risky game when all you have to do if you do get past after those two DRS zones, is stay maybe together. So what is it? Turn six is the technically the first detection zone. Um, and then you've got the run all the way down to seven and eight, which is basically no corners. And then it's the fast left, right of nine and 10, which haven't been changed. You get DRS all the way there. If you get past, fine. You get another dose of DRS down towards turn 11. All you have to do is stay within a second for two corners maybe two corners and then you've got DRS again at the next detection point. So I'm not sure it's going to be as chickeny and also it's a very short lap. So I would, I would imagine, you know, you'll have Perez's and signs in the mix as well with all of this DRS. I see it more being maybe a DRS train than it being DRS chicken and, and, and stuff like that. I'm not fully convinced that it's going to evolve and change this Grand Prix into something unbelievable. Uh, but we've, it's, it's unprecedented. We've never seen it before. So we will find out on Sunday. We will. I think, um, especially, by the way, your term chickeny, that is a, a technical term, especially for you <laughs> listening in to the to the podcast. But yeah, I think there's a possibility of it. Obviously, DRS chicken isn't something new, but it's something that has been highlighted recently with, especially in Saudi Arabia um, and the DRS detection zone they have in there. But There's a possibility, but I don't personally think we're going to see it as much as we have seen previously, but we'll wait to see it in action. I personally, I don't know if this is an unpopular opinion or not, but I think four DRS zones are just a bit too farcical for me because although I know F1 fans are going to be like, oh my goodness, like we want to see overtaking, Katie, what are you on about? Like this is just going to help encourage overtaking. Um, It gets to a point where I'm like, well, how much is too much help? Because would you rather see a load of overtakes? I mean, last time we were here in 2019, Mercedes put a report out and said that the 2019 Australian Grand Prix featured 10 passing moves. Seven of those came under DRS. So obviously it is beneficial and it's a good thing to have. And I don't think we should scrap DRS and all this yada, yada, yada. But do you want to see loads of overtaking or do you want to see like a good selection of real quality overtakes that have really been earned, I guess. I'm not saying that, um, you know, it's going to be as easy as just like come past, overtake, and it will just be like that again and again and again. And the person that starts last could end up in first or whatever. 
wait for that to be clipped. <laughs> um, but, but yeah, I don't know. I just feel like it's too many, but maybe I'm just a grouch. I have been up since three, so it could be that. <laughs> yeah, you've pretty much done a working day already and it's only uh, 20 Woo! to 12 uh, in, in the day. Uh, tying in with uh, this whole DRS ch- chat, not me 123 xbox asks, how effective will the four DRS zones be? I think they'll be very effective. The, the key thing is whether or not the leader, for example, whoever it is, Sharkla, um, <laughs> if, if he can break a be- second, then all of a sudden the, the game has changed. You know, Verstappen or whoever's behind won't have those four DRS zones or four DRS usages to, to close up. And I think that was the, the thing we saw in Saudi Arabia where it looked like Leclerc had it in the bag, was absolutely fine, was able to stretch his advantage in the first sector and it was sitting at around 1.2 to 1.1.5 seconds. And Verstappen could never get in that DRS zone. Then we had that VSC, I think it was. Verstappen then managed to get within that one second window. And all of a sudden, the, the whole race was changed. Verstappen had the extra uh, top speed, which, I mean, to be fair, he was fast in a straight line anyway. So it gave him even more of an advantage. And then it was simple pickings, really, for Max Verstappen once he worked out how to actually get past Charles Leclerc uh, after all these DRS chicken things and, and whatnot. Um, so that's going to be the key thing is those first three laps at the start, can the leader extend that gap to a point where they won't have to defend from four DRS zones? It's, it's going to be fascinating. I, I said it in the video that we made as well, that I'm, I am happy they're trying something new. And if it is a complete disaster, we'll, we'll throw it in the bin. I think combining an extra DRS zone and also having all these track changes will make it hard to actually measure how well the track changes have done and how well the extra DRS so you know having one variable you can be like right well we've we've done it I say one we've had the new cars as well so there's always going to be loads of variables but variables but the more variables you add it's very difficult to work out what's actually been uh, the the positive factor here so I think they'll be for effective, sure. effective for sure uh if, if you are within that one second but it's going to be it's going to be crucial uh, to see what happens in those first three laps as you said, there are so many variables like Verstappen's talked about how the tyres play an impact with how much overtaking can be done. Obviously, he said that it's better than previous years, but once you push too hard on these tyres, they kind of just fall off the cliff a bit. So it will be, uh, it'll be an interesting thing to see. But um, I'm just, like you say, happy they're trying something new. And Australia is no stranger to having new things trialed. Obviously, we had the quali format shake up here in 2016 which still gives me cold sweats when I think about it because I really didn't like it but (laughs) um yeah nice that they're they're trying things out and I wonder if we'll see any other tracks this year that maybe get given an extra DRS section in it could be cool yeah maybe they think well four was good let's have five for Abu Dhabi outraged everyone on Twitter let's let's do it again let's have DRS everywhere I mean we say that but we did used to have DRS everywhere in qualifying uh, back in the day, I can't remember exactly what year it was, but DRS was allowed uh, throughout qualifying. Uh, just, and I quite like that to be fair because it pushed some of the teams further and and kind of pushing in certain areas. I remember Turkey, for example, when Red Bull were, I think, were the only team to be able to run with like DRS open through turn eight. I think that was. Uh, forgive me if I'm wrong, but I think that is correct uh, and things like that. So I, I didn't mind it, but uh, yeah, it, it'll be DRS open for the entire race soon uh, if they keep going the way they are. Uh, Joseph Maynes asks, would you like to see an increase in the frequency of track layout changes? Yes, Joseph. Yes, I would. I think that especially the ones that, struggle for overtakes you know australia i saw a stat that we've had one on track overtake in 30 years for the lead around melbourne now That's not good. that kind of tells you a lot doesn't it really uh, not only just about the track but about the cars and, and whatnot but uh, you know we've seen on track overtakes for the lead around other tracks so clearly there was something that needed to be changed uh, in albert park so yes i, I think Definitely, there should be this open-mindedness of making changes to the to, to more boring tracks. Uh, but the problem there is the track has to be willing to spend money to make that happen. It's not like Formula One, just chuck them a boatload, like your track's rubbish. Here you go, here's 10 <laughs> mil, go sort it out. It's, it's not quite like that. But I guess the thing for Australia is that they have to lift it up and put it back down every year anyway. Mm, so it's the national park. Exactly. So, like so I guess that they, they have to spend a lot of money anyway, resurfacing and, and making it all beautiful like they did this year, that they they were kind of open to 
to to making those changes because I think they've resurf- resurfaced it for the first time in God knows how many years. And that's again another struggle. Six years. Yeah. So that's another struggle for the for the drivers this year is that it's going to be less grip, it's going to be more tire wear. Uh, so yeah, there's lots of things to, to keep an eye on this weekend. But I, I certainly would love to see uh, more track layout changes. Um, you know, I know you can't change Monaco. You can't unless you knock down some buildings. Just, but you can't. Charlotte Clerk's Monaco. home. Yeah, yeah. In the bin. Let's knock that down, Charlotte. <laughs> <laughs> no, I think uh, just crazy actually thinking that the last time that the circuit was resurfaced, I was li- a literal baby, <laughs> having been born in '95 and it was done in '96. So that's crazy. I was four. Um, you were four. Okay, old man. Right. <laughs> wow. <laughs> oh, sorry. Um, but yeah, I think it's it's a good thing for things like street circuits if there is that flexibility there to you know maybe change a corner here, add a chicane there. Obviously, for slightly older tracks that are more traditional, we're still seeing changes being made. Spa's a perfect example, although that's not necessarily done been done for the benefit of Formula One. They've done it so they can host motorcycle racing there again. Um, but you know, they've they've gone through changes to increase safety and things like that. But um for this, this has been more of a case of get rid of this corner and add this in and do that. So I think it's good for certain tracks, but for example, Imola, I know that that track is narrow in parts. I I know that the cars are probably a bit too big, a bit too boxy for them now, but that's one of the reasons why I love it because it's just so, it punishes mistakes. Like last year I thought was a brilliant race there. One of the most underrated on the 2021 calendar. I feel like we had so many crazy races. It kind of got forgotten about, but that for me was probably in my top five races last year. Um, and yeah, if they turned around and suddenly said, we're going to make Imola much wider, I don't know if I'd be too happy about it. So I feel like it's swings and roundabouts. Um, and we'll see how it goes. I say all these phrases, by the way, and I never know if they're actually real. I don't Uh, think that's a real phrase. No, that is a, that is a phrase. Uh, So don't worry. That is. Okay. I'm really panicky now because Tommy listened to one. I did a podcast the other day with Hannah, who's our, (laughs) editorial uh assistant and she i I said a fresh slate instead of a a, like a clean start on a fresh slate slate. and i got it the wrong way around so it's meant to be a clean slate clean slate and a fresh start but i just get them muddled all the time and now i'm really paranoid every time i have a saying i'm like i've got it wrong no swings and roundabouts was correct so uh yeah you're fine there don't worry um but but yeah it's uh it's it's interesting you talk about imola we we have spoken about this uh, a little bit before i think it was probably around the uh, the imola weekend but um uh, the thing was that that track is narrow and you throw a bit of rain in there and all of a sudden it's an incredible race because the faster cars can't necessarily get through on the slower cars because it's really difficult to overtake. But if you have a dry race, everybody's on the grid in their performance order, then you've got, you know, a stinker. So it is kind of throwing in a, a Bernie Ecclestone sprinkler idea yeah. and you're absolutely flying around uh, you know, tracks like Imola. So yeah, it's, it's incredible. And, and and that's the thing Like Imola, you know, again, has a lot of history, a lot of heritage. You don't want to change it too much that you lose that, that history. Um, and it's not that bad to have a few tracks on the calendar that have narrow characteristics that punish mistakes, as you say. Uh, so yeah, I, I wouldn't be a fan of changing a historical track like like Imola. Uh, moving on, I, I did actually mention uh, about the new surface. Uh, so drivers were making a lot of mistakes. Uh, we saw Charles Leclerc went off tr- uh, twice into the gravel, and I was actually sat there watching, and I was like, "Oh come on, Charles, stop, stop doing Put it this. together." Because <laughs> I could just see that like there's going to be one too many, and then all of a sudden he's mm. in the wall. Yeah, but it, it does seem to be. Charles Leclerc's style in a lot of ways. It's not as bad well, just as... to go off the track. <laughs> well, no, no, but the thing, like you know, Bahrain, for example, he was pushing blooming hard round there in practice and spun. Uh, he spun off at uh, in uh, the, the last sector, uh, that mm. left hander after the the short straight. Um, but it does seem as though Charles Leclerc's style is to push just a little bit over the limit, make a mistake, and then realize, okay, fine, that's that's the limit. I learned my now. lesson. Um, yeah. But yeah. It, it, he does seem to make mistakes, but as long as he doesn't make them in the sessions that properly count, then I have no problem with it. This podcast is sponsored by BetterHelp. People don't always realise that physical symptoms like headaches, teeth grinding and even digestive issues can be indicators of stress. And let's not forget about doom scrolling, sleeping too little, sleeping too much, under eating and overeating. 
Stress shows up in all kinds of ways, and in a world that's telling you to do more, sleep less, and grind all the time, here's your reminder to take care of yourself, do less, and maybe try some therapy. BetterHelp is customized online therapy that offers video, phone, and even live chat sessions with your therapist, so you don't have to see anyone on camera if you don't want to. It's much more affordable than in-person therapy. Give it a try and see if online therapy can help lower your stress. WTF1 listeners get 10% off their first month at betterhelp.com slash WTF1. That's B-E-T-T-E-R-H-E-L-P dot com slash WTF1. As a small business owner, you are juggling a hundred balls in the air and don't have time to interview candidates who just aren't qualified for your role. LinkedIn Jobs makes it easier for you to find the people you want to interview faster and for free. Create a free job post in minutes on LinkedIn Jobs to tap into the world's largest professional network with over 30 million people in the UK. Then add your job and the purple hashtag hiring frame to your LinkedIn profile to spread the word that you're hiring so your network can help you find the right people to hire. Simple tools like screening questions make it easy to focus on candidates with just the right skills and experience so you can quickly prioritise who you'd like to interview and hire. It's why small businesses rate LinkedIn Jobs number one in delivering quality hires versus leading competitors. LinkedIn Jobs helps you find the candidates you want to talk to faster and you can post a job for free. Just visit linkedin.com slash WTF1. Again, that's linkedin.com slash WTF1 to post a job for free. Terms and conditions apply. Uh, Hamilton went off into the gravel as well, which is pretty unheard of. You don't usually see Lewis going off and, and making these kind of mistakes uh, all too often. Russell went off, Alonso spun, uh, but then very shortly after went fastest at one point. Uh, so the Alpine looked, looked pretty good, good to be fair. Um, but yeah, not only is there new surface, but there's also, uh, they, they've changed the camber of the corners too, uh, which is supposed to be positive camber as they call it. So it's supposed to aid the drivers around the corners, but uh, it is still a little bit of a difference compared to, to what we've seen in previous years around here. So it is cool that we've got, because obviously new surface, if you look at it from a, just a, a, you know, a generic Formula One fan and me included probably a few years ago, you think new surface, that's going to be grippy as hell. You know, that's new set, but we've seen Turkey, for example, that new surface did not work at all. Uh, and it takes time for the, the oils to bed in and all this scientific stuff that it's not actually grippier than the old surface that would have looked a little bit dusty and rubbish, but they get up to speed a lot quicker. It's very true. Um, like you say, lots of mistakes being made, especially, well, not especially, but Leclerc, like you say, did make yeah, a on, few mistakes. And calm it down. Why do I just say especially Leclerc? There was loads of mistakes out there, lots of lock Because <laughs> we were talking about it. Could see the Magnuson panic in your eyes. Magnussen as well, didn't he? Yeah, that's true. Paul Magnussen, he like has had not the great a great day apparently he woke up not feeling very well he skipped the press conference um but he was in the car still not feeling great though at the end of the day uh but something that i thought of or was mentioned is that if magnuson couldn't race they haven't got their reserves there because giovanazzi is doing formula e in rome and fittipaldi isn't there so i don't know what happens if magnuson wakes up tomorrow i'm gonna get a call aren't i yeah, <laughs> it's it. happening, guys. It's, it's happening. exciting. Gunter um, definitely so... does not have my number, but I can I can make that happen. No, you make it happen. Unfortunately, yeah, not. do it. <laughs> um, but so that's when one to see how that goes. Obviously, I think I'm hoping Magnuson is fine and all good. His neck is also still really giving him aggro. Apparently, um, I don't know which driver it was, but one of the drivers went up to him and like poked him in the back of the neck. <laughs> To which he was like, ah, that really hurts. So I, I guess his neck is still really sensitive because he had all these Sorry, issues. Why, in, um... why does a driver go up to <laughs> poke them in the neck <laughs> of all of all places? Just because I think they knew he had. Because last time in in Saudi, he had all this yeah, tape yeah. around his neck. So maybe he was saying like, oh, my neck's really bad still. And they were like, you know, if you have a friend who's I don't know, just had a jab or something like that, yeah. and you punch them who, in the arm. Who was arm, it? Do we know? I don't, but I might be able to find out. But I just yeah, Holkenberg just came into Australia yeah. and was like, <laughs> just smack, <laughs> smack him in the back of the neck. I want to drive. Um, so yeah, Paul Magnuson is going through the wars a bit. Um, but the track surface doesn't seem to be particularly slippy. Although we've said we've seen a few people going off. Um, generally, it's okay. And something that we will talk about a little bit later, which might 
add in a little bit of excitement is probably have gone for some rather unusual tyre tyre allocation this weekend. Let's talk about um, it. Now. Let's do it. Let's talk about it. You know, okay. let's, let's be fluid. Let's you know. Let's be versatile. Wow. Uh, do it. So yeah, to, to the tyres and. I, I don't remember the last time it was this where they've taken a step between, but it's the C2, the C3, and the C5. So the C2 uh, is the is the hard tyre, the C3 is the medium, and then the C5 is the soft. So there's an extra step between the medium and the soft, which uh, I, I suppose will make for interesting qualifying. I know there was talk about a little bit about in practice how you know some of the cars maybe were struggling in the last sector because of pushing the the, the softs too hard with them being the softest compound that's what it is so it goes between c1 and c5 um and c5 is the softest tire available to the formula one uh, drivers so um yeah it means high speed a lot of stickiness at the beginning of their lap but can Ooh. also mean it, it, it goes away uh, towards the end so uh, that for me doesn't probably change a lot apart from qualifying because if mm. we have that basically confirms to me that we're not going to see anybody start on the soft tire because there's going to be no point because it's going to go three laps and then be you know completely out the window. So I, I don't know. I, I think I feel like that might actually create less strategy options because there's okay. not that durability with the soft tire that maybe you'd stick on with 20 laps to go at the end. But it, with it being the C5, is there any point? That's what that's my feeling. It's- it's a valid, uh, valid point. It'll be the debut for the C5 compound with these new Pirelli tyres as well. So hopefully that means that there will be some sort of unknowns around it. Obviously, some of the cars have done testing with the tyres last year. Um, but yeah, we haven't seen them really do a proper race with these C5 tyres. And yeah, it's a different... A, they did some running, didn't they, in Spain? With and. Uh, yeah, some Bahrain running in Spain, but not like a proper yeah. race setting. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because um, we I didn't get them in some, Bahrain. Some mileage Saudi. on it, at least. Yeah, but like having to battle and see how yeah. long they can last in a fight or something like that. But yeah, we had C2, C3, and C4 compounds in 2019, and that's what was selected for the 2020 race that obviously never happened. Uh, but yeah, I'm I'm interested to see how it all plays out. I hope, yeah, that it's not just a case of them going, okay, we're going to give you the softest softest compound available and then just don't get used in the race. And they're yeah, like, would, mm, I, yeah, we're going to avoid that. I don't personally see it unless it's literally like a safety Pop car. Pop Alonso on them in the start yeah, Alonso, and get him. Yeah. Maybe. If there was sprint <laughs> qualifying, maybe we'd, uh, we'd see that. Um, but yeah, it just doesn't, especially with now not having the Q2 tyre rule as well. It's not, they're not even going to be forced to, the top 10 aren't even going to be forced to use the soft tyres. So uh, yeah, I reckon it'll be a load of softs in qualifying and then we don't see them in the race. That's my, uh, that's my prediction. Uh, Moving swiftly on to our next topic, which is about impeding. Uh, So of course, with the track changes, the, the, the circuit has become quicker. I think we saw a 20.4 was pole in 2019 from, from Hamilton. And we've gone into the 18s so far in practice and uh, should get quicker, I'd imagine, uh, when we get to qualifying, probably 17s, maybe 16s even. Um, but the, the big thing was there was a lot of blocking out there. And of course, with the new rules this year, they give out reprimands a lot quicker, don't they? But you're allowed a lot more reprimands before you actually get some sort of uh, penalty. I'm sure you with the rule book, Katie, can uh, give us all the clarification <laughs> that you need. Uh, but just to speak about the some of the, the blocking that went on, so... There was a reprimand for Signs for blocking Joe. Signs got blocked by Stroll. Stroll blocked Signs apparently, and Hamilton. Hamilton and Stroll then impeded each other, which I, I, that <laughs> at the to same be corner at the same time. Yeah, so I'm the documentation like, may be a little bit confusing there, and I don't, I'm not I'm not sure how they can both block each other unless they're side by side through it. Exactly. Uh, Sonoda <laughs> blocked Signs. Uh, so wh- what I've seen here is that Signs was involved in a lot, and so was Stroll. Uh, and that kind of links back to Tommy's point uh, from Saudi Arabia about Stroll not having any awareness at all, because of course he doesn't have mirrors. Tommy was arguing, and I think we both agreed that Stroll did turn in on Albon as much as Albon did hit him. Stroll was just like, nah, fam, I'm going to just turn in. I've got a ghost car. Um, and and then him blocking all these people in Australia would suggest that he just doesn't have that awareness of, and maybe, it's, you know, we, we can't just blame Lance Stroll because we're not, you know, we're not there in his ear. Maybe the team aren't, communicating with him enough or communicating him in, in, a, in a concise enough way uh, with this uh, fast racetrack uh, to get out of the way quick enough. But it, it is interesting that he is a culprit of this only two weeks after us talking about him not having any awareness. 
Yeah, well, what's crazy is FP2 happened, so 7 a.m. UK time, which was like four hours ago, five hours ago, and we've been waiting for updates this whole time, and I've been refreshing the decision document page. Nothing's coming up. I've just refreshed it now, and the decisions are coming through. So clearly, the FIA is a burning. Um, So we have one... um, So. Quickly, before I go through the FP2 decisions, in FP1, the only decisions that were decided, decisions decided, was um, that there was a reprimand, reprimand, can you tell I've been up since three? (laughs) My brain is like, not today, babe. Um, So science was given a reprimand for um, impeding Joe, which he said was partly due to the fact that his radio volume wasn't working and he didn't hear his team say, you know, Joe's on a fast lap behind you, but he still got a reprimand. And to go into the point of reprimands, so yeah, you're allowed five in a season. And then if you get to five reprimands in the year, then you get a 10 place grid drop at the next event um and four of those have to be for driving related offenses so this would be impeding it could be a pit lane offense anything like that um science has two now out from the year but the first one that he got was for an unsafe release with alonso um and that was counted as a non-driving reprimand so just to give you a little bit of context uh, science, science was not driving at the time officer it was uh, yeah <laughs> someone <laughs> <Seems> else <full. laughs> yeah um, so Carlos Sainz, yeah, got his, uh, this reprimand this morning and Stroll was given no further action. And now for the next set of, uh, things, Stroll's also been found of no further action of impeding Carlos Sainz, um, at turn 13. And it says due to the presence of multiple cars converging on the final corners, all of which impacted the situations, the stewards considered that car 18. So Stroll did not unnecessarily impede car 55 and take no further action. So if you did watch the coverage, it was quite a close call, to be honest, of um, Stroll kind of hiding or sitting on the apex and Carlos really having to go around him and almost tagging him. But yeah, the stewards have said no further action to that one. And let me refresh the page. And that's the only one so far. So this could be a breaking news, a little update throughout the rest of the pod. It's a reprimand Mm. podcast. That's what this is now. Um, But yes, of course, when this podcast goes out, it will be a few hours after we've actually uh, recorded it. So there may well be updates. Check uh, the website, guys. I'll be there. I'll sharing all the penalties. No, WTF my one WTF1 website. website. Don't yeah. send them to the FIA website. Yeah, actually, don't go to the FIA <laughs> I'll website. I'll be out of a it's job, rubbish. hun. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you're going to have your, how many penalty, penalty points do the uh, drivers have? And there's going to be how many reprimands do the drivers have as well uh, to Is release ev- every single race weekend as well. Uh, moving on, uh, Mercedes. They uh, still don't look great, do they? Uh, they didn't haven't brought any upgrades, uh, according to what we've heard. So that's quite surprising i think we all expected some upgrades and of course they do this show and tell thing this these days don't they so it is you know it's not like they're hiding stuff they have to actually say what they've brought to each uh grand prix um, they don't seem to be porpoising much uh when i've seen the onboards uh, from pre-practice uh but no the 11th and 13th i think they were in, in fp2 and you know i, I think i actually did yeah, no, I said one Merc doesn't make Q3, so I'm looking pretty good. I'm not going to lie to you. Uh, so we'll, we'll see if that comes true. Um, but yeah, comparing that to Ferrari, who were quickest uh, with Charles Leclerc, just want to mention that, um, they were bouncing all over the shop, like porpoising McGee down towards turn nine and ten. And that's, that is a technical term as well, same as chickeny. Uh, porpoising uh, McGee. Uh, uh, literally, the replays that we saw of like Charles Leclerc, well, both of them, bounce it like properly that is going to be so uncomfortable uh over the course of a 58 lap race or whatever it is uh that but but clearly ferrari are like well you know we're going to bounce around a bit but we're not going to lose the 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 performance there so for me it then kind of makes me think does the porpoising affect different teams cars differently in in a way like mercedes clearly want to fix this bouncing issue because the porpoising doesn't work for them. But Ferrari, like, yeah, man, um, I'm on a bouncy castle and it's still quick. So it, it's an interesting uh, point to, to look at. 
you're going to be miffed if you're at Mercedes and you look at Ferrari and they're bouncing around in their cars like little bobbleheads, and yet they're still so fast. You must be like, for God's sake. Um, but not if you're Valtteri Bottas, you're probably thinking, ha, ha, ha. Oh, uh, but yeah, ha- Hamilton, um, you know, I'm not saying this is a bad thing. Everyone's allowed to be a bit down in the dumps if your car's not very good, especially if he's come off the back of having such you know, a uh, reliable and successful car, but he's, um, he said, you know, you get into the car very optimistic and then you make changes and it doesn't be seeming to want to improve. Um, and yeah, just everything that you change in the car, uh, nothing you change in the car is making a difference at the moment. So he's not feeling too probably positive about it all, but it's early days. It really is like this Mercedes could suddenly, have a light bulb moment and after i don't know miami or something like that they could be the ones to beat again so it's probably why ferrari are like okay we've got to pick up every single point we can now at the start of the season because yeah like we've said you know mercedes are such a uh a successful team you know in this modern era of formula one that seeing them struggle like this is so uncharacteristic and which is why everybody's kind of thinking well it won't be long before they do find a cure to whatever this issue is and they're back at the front again so yeah at the moment I think they're just trying to lay low let the others take the limelight and they'll just settle in the back for a bit but I'm <laughs> yeah, sure that's that exactly they'll be yeah Toto's like guys it's okay you we'll, know, guys, we'll just chill yeah. for a little while see if we fix something keep, a, keep our heads then, down yeah <laughs> Uh, it is yeah. just George Russell luck, isn't it, really, to uh, move from Williams to Mercedes and Mercedes are no longer dominant. Uh, you know, that is uh, unfortunate for George, but he's still got... It's a Valtteri uh, Bottas a, master plan. <laughs> it literally is. Bottas took all of the all of the blueprints to, to Alfa Romeo. Uh, but yeah, it is it is going to be interesting. Uh, uh, the feeling is, as soon as Mercedes fix their problems, whenever that will be, they will be at towards the front. You know, they, they, I've... You know, I tweeted the other day that I still firmly believe that Mercedes will be the fastest team at some point this year. I think you're a fool to to write them off. Uh, you know, there was people writing Mercedes off uh, into Silverstone. I think it was last year. Of course, I know there was an incident that That's went true. on there, which had a big point swing. But there were lots yeah. of there were lots of writing off of Red Bull, and then there was writing off Mercedes. And you, you can't write off such a big operation as Mercedes, who have won the last eight constructors' titles, and we're only in round three of twenty three. There is a lot of points still up for grabs. Uh, so yeah, just we'll just hold fire on writing them off just yet. Uh, next up, Alonso, who I did mention was fastest at one point, um, and Sonoda. He was, yeah, he was. He was what? I was going to say he was spinning around at one point. He was spinning around uh, and then set the fastest time. Yeah. Uh, and Sonoda, so Alonso and Sonoda are on their final internal combustion engine, and round three of three. <laughs> So they uh, have it's not great. <laughs> and they are using their third ones. It not necessarily means that the other two are in the bin, but it's concerning that they're already using the third fresh one in the third round. That's not probably what the teams were hoping to, to do. So clearly there are some problems. You know, we saw Sonoda last time out stop on the way to the grid, didn't he? Uh, so there's, there's lots of problems uh, for, for both of those drivers, which could mean a lot of penalties over the next 20 races uh, after Australia. Oh, gosh. It's just just Fernando's luck and Yuki's luck, isn't it? But, yeah, it is it is a little bit of a red flag to have the already on their final fresh PU and we're in the third, like just about to start the third race of the season. So um, I know last year there were certainly conversations towards the end of the season, whether the cap should be lifted. Obviously, if you do go over your three of your um, ice or whatever it might be, um, you can take more. You just get penalised for it as it goes on. Um, But yeah, quite, quite concerning, I'd say. And even Lando, it's not quite as bad as... Uh, Alonso and, and Yuki, but he's on his second PU. Um, so it's, I suppose, interesting if you look at it in the way that Renault or Alpine, if you want to refer to them as whichever way, they have had an issue. Yuki obviously has a Red Bull powertrains 
brackets Honda um, power unit and he's having issues and then Lando's got the Mercedes in the back so it's not just like one uh, power unit supply that's really having an issue uh, it seems to be fairly evenly spread up and down the grid but yeah it's not great I'll be honest no it's not <laughs> so great we'll at see all. what happens not great at all uh, my just, L plan you know- tattoo I'm hoping it's safe for now. Yeah, I think you're okay with uh, Fernando. Fernando doesn't look like he's going to win the championship this year, Katie, so you don't have to get a tattoo. We've said it's only race three, though. (laughs) True, anything can happen. L plan. (laughs) L plan, indeed. Uh, The L plan is also not working for Sebastian Vettel, uh, who has returned. Lovely to see him back. Uh, But he was under investigation. I'm assuming he's still under investigation. Uh, for taking a scooter on track uh, right after the session finished in FP1. So his car broke about 15, 10 minutes before the end of the session. And next thing you know, end of session hits. Sebastian Vettel's out there with his helmet perched on top of his head, uh, doing laps (laughs) of the Melbourne track. Now... I don't know how it's to feel entertainment about this. all day. That's what I pay my ticket money for. <laughs> yeah, exactly. That's the kind of thing. You know, he's waving to the crowd. He's being a great sport. I can understand where the stewards are, where they have a rule book, and Seb has clearly broken it because <laughs> isn't there like a five minute window between the session ending and the actual track being able to be, you know, I guess accessed uh, by anybody. He was, he's allowed to go on it if there's a prior approval as well from like a marshal or whatever, but he didn't get that. He just, just got on a scooter. And Did he um, not? Do you think he'd speak to a marshal? Cause the, he's, he kind nah, of just found a bike. That was just joyride. Just, he's just, he's just, you think? A, no, no, I don't think so. Oh, uh, it'd, be quite funny, say, it'd be quite funny. Like some did. guys like, I'm sure I parked <laughs> it around my, here. My scooter. <laughs> on Seb. It. Yeah, uh, going into the distance over to the crowd but yeah it's as fun as it was um to see and it was quite amusing I was um covering the session and Tommy who um he was sort of around for the session as well and um I messaged him afterwards and I was like that's weird the FIA system is saying there's a yellow like double wave yellows being waved <laughs> I was like but the sessions ended five minutes ago like what's going on and then he was like, yeah, that doesn't sound right. I think it's like a mistake or something. And then sure enough, like our TV cuts to Seb on his little moped. And we both put in the chat like, Seb? Oh, I'm, oh my God, what the hell? Um, but yeah, there's no update on that. But I just love the fact that within the summons document, you've got, you know, the impeding, all this kind of stuff. And then summons, car five, unauthorized use of a scooter on the track. <laughs> it's just like... <laughs> I love how he's car five as well. He didn't context. have his car either. That's, uh, that's yeah, amazing. I know. It's just so daft. So who knows what that will be, whether it will be another reprimand or whether mm. the FIA will want to make an example of it. I mean, I don't know, but I at least the fans enjoyed it and he got back safely, which is the most important thing. Like he wasn't trying to do any kind of like popping a wheelie or, yeah, yeah, I mean, you know, like the hilarious. people, the rebel people that can like stand on the back of their bike and do like an aerobatic show or something. At least he was just tootling around. And I guess the problem Lights. as well, from a safety perspective is that he wasn't even wearing his helmet properly. So like he had no. his helmet just perched on top of his head. If he, if he was wearing his helmet, maybe there'd be a little bit more lenience, but it's just, it's, it's just, just so I mean, I loved seeing it. It was brilliant. It was just different, but I can also understand from a safety perspective where the FIA have to step in. Uh, otherwise, you know, we'll see all kinds of, of silly things, but yeah, I, I'm sure he did get a permission from the marshal, like, all right, mate, can I, uh, I don't know why Seb speaks like that, but all right, mate, you uh, you got that, <laughs> yes, that scooter? <laughs> yeah, no worries. Uh, and then he just gets on. But I think, I guess the approval has to come from race control and then he yeah, can Yeah, you can have a and, and vehicle that, on the track. And that clearly was wow. not uh, was not allowed. Anyway, uh, Kit Gidspers, sorry if I just butchered that, okay. is Seb better, <laughs> better off doing qualifying on the scooter or the AMR22? I would say the scooter, uh, more reliability at least, um, because oh that uh, Aston God. Martin did not finish that practice session. And then Seb, of course, didn't even get any running in FB2. Right, I'm going to say it right now. If Seb out-qualifies Lance Stroll after Lance Stroll getting out-qualified last time out um, by Nico Hulkenberg in Saudi Arabia, that is correct, right? That is that is what happened. I think Lance beat him in Saudi, but Hulkenberg beat him in One Bahrain. Okay, maybe it was Bahrain. I think. Um, There's a lot of numbers to memorise. A lot of, lot of things. But if, if Seb out-qualifies Lance... 
it's big trouble. That's probably the, that that would be the worst thing for Lance if he gets out qualified by Seb because Seb has just come back to the sport. He hasn't done any races. He said he felt like he was late to school, didn't he? Coming back, yeah, to, like the, the new one. kid at school. Lance <laughs> has to out qualify Seb. So I'm glad my my <laughs> my prediction isn't. Uh, actually, no, I'm not glad because it should be. Uh, you know, because usually I'm like, oh, Stroll will out qualify Vel. That's mm. usually that was the running meme from from uh, was it last season or the season before? But last um, season, yeah. last season. Uh, so it has to come true for Lance's sake. It really does. Yeah, I don't. I mean, obviously, like being serious. Obviously, the car would be quicker. But okay. um, the well, technically not. It broke down. So like what's, a little what's faster than zero miles boost an hour? on the back of the bike. <laughs> savage um but yeah Stroll's really got to perform this weekend stop getting himself in the steward's office and instead get himself in the briefing rooms making sure yeah that's Sorry. like being on a driving test being sassy. Um, no no it's fine you're allowed um and <laughs> yeah I I'm happy to see Seb back as I think everyone else is yeah. uh but yeah he's He's not been playing by the rules by getting on this moment. I think as well. I'm sure Seb got on that scooter, went onto the track. Like he is a four-time world champion. He's yeah. been here for many years. He knew that probably was a little bit naughty. There's no oh, way. Oh, for hell sure. He's, he's the GPDA not... director. Yeah, yeah, he... <laughs> like he, he must think, hmm, at least put your helmet on properly. Yeah. And right. then you could just say, Oh, it wasn't me. It was someone else. But there you go, an imposter. <laughs> there you go. You can tell I was. Or troublemaker at school, and I used to get yeah, out of things quite easily. Oh, wasn't me. Wasn't me. <laughs> wasn't me. Uh, but, uh, love it. Love Seb. Um, right. We're going to remind you now of our Australian Grand Prix predictions. So I mentioned the other one. Uh, I mentioned the first one a little bit earlier. So I've said that oh, one wait, mo- the offense for Seb's come through. Oh, what is it? Oh, breaking news. Breaking he news. has been given a fine of 5,000 euros. Oh, so Seb will check his bank account and be like, have you taken okay. it yet or not? All right. <laughs> literally is that it that, that's, that's, that is probably the most expensive Uber he'll ever take but that is yeah he'll probably think it's worth it to be fair just having not to yeah, walk yeah just to do a little parade <laughs> <laughs> okay literally, so I'm that lazy 5, 000, that I would take a £5,000 fine yeah 5000 uh, was it euros 5000 euros uh, yeah fine, I assume. yeah so okay cool so that's uh, I wonder how far he actually travelled and then we could work it out per metre how much he spent oh yeah um, but anyway uh, so our reminder of our Australian Grand Prix predictions I went for one that doesn't make Q3 and has no points I think I could be in for a double here I, I reckon and a by the way it was at least one Merc if both Mercs don't make Q3 that still is a point don't don't try and weasel me out no of this yeah come on you could say at least one i'm pretty then. sure i said at least one in the actual prediction uh, i just wrote it down like that so if you want to go back to the audio I'm i will sure oh i, I will uh, yeah anyway uh katie yours i went for ferrari pole oh <laughs> that second one doesn't crazy good, prediction and magnuson top five and quali so we won't talk about that one thank you <laughs> Hopefully and then Tommy's not here quality. to read his no tommy isn't so uh he's gone for at least his. four dnfs uh, and russell makes it 2-1 in quali Oh, that could both be uh, very true as well. Be, yeah. uh, Shady underscore Man United. Signs getting his first win. Signs does look pretty good, not going to lie. Not mm. far off uh, Charles Leclerc. He was fastest in FP1 as well, wasn't uh, Carlos? But that was after Leclerc went off into the gravel and didn't really get a representative lap time. But Signs looking good, definitely. Uh, AF 1555, new team on the podium for 2022. Maybe Alpine, who knows? Uh, and Roberts oh, underscore okay. Epners, both McLarens out of the points. I think McLaren are looking a little bit better this weekend mm. they do look a little bit more competitive uh that they could i think they'll score points uh, i think the mclaren he jinx that now <laughs> yeah I, I i hand out jinxes just left right and center so uh, but they do look better they don't look like the team from bahrain that were absolutely horrendous we'll see uh but on the outer skirts of the points maybe do you reckon you i mean you're wearing a, a, a ricardo i know yeah if they t-shirt. don't then i can have to burn this Okay, fair. All right. What well, it was you said, it. so I'm not doing that. You said it, not me. So <laughs> no. Katie will be burning her shirt. No, I won't. If, uh, if uh, they don't make the points, right? There you go, Katie. Final thoughts. I actually have one. I have one. I've been <gasps> waiting for that. So my final thoughts are with the marshal that fell over an FP2 in front of the whole world stage because I, I can't stop thinking about it, and it's so funny. Oh my goodness! When so was this? There was a re- there was a. Re- 
I'm going to giggle thinking about it. I think I fast forwarded through the red flag. (laughs) There was a red flag for, I think it's a piece of Stroll's car. And um, they sent a marshal out and he's out there running and the cameras are all on him. And I don't know what it was, whether he was on, he slipped on the grass. Maybe it was a bit dewy or something happened. Maybe he saw himself on TV. But anyway, he was running and he was running at such an angle that his legs just buckled underneath him. And he like stacked it on the grass and all of the Aussie crowd went way. Uh, so, I, need to, I need to find this I clip. There so must be, there must be a clip of it. I know Sky Sports tweeted it earlier. Oh, here we go. But like, I'm about to see it. I felt so bad for the poor guy because I would 100% oh, so have done that, the same thing. He's got the helicopter thing. cam as well. And ev- like all of the cameras. They're watching him. He's thinking, this is my moment. I am. This is my big moment. Yeah. I am an Olympic. <laughs> Oh, it's an incredible, like, like the angle as well. If you just see this I tiny, really let's just go. Hope, <laughs> I really hope F1 find him and like give him a paddock pass or something. Because that guy, he needs to be bought a beer and he needs to be given a hug because he's going to be thinking about that for his whole entire life. the commentator life. <laughs> said don't fall as well. Oh no, it was commentator's curse. So yeah, that's my final thought <laughs> is thoughts and prayers with the marshal that fell over. You're amazing. We love you. Oh, I just watched it again. That's unbelievable. It's amazing. Oh, I've wow. been giggling if about you that seen since that, I saw go it this and morning. Watch it. It's on Twitter. Just yeah. type in F1 Marshall. Brilliant stuff. Uh, yeah. Shout out to the marshal. Uh, my final thoughts are looking forward to talking about the Charlotte Claire victory on Monday on the podcast. Uh, live for Team WTF1 members. Uh, so join Team WTF1 if you want want to watch us live on Monday, record the podcast. If not, uh, we will release it on the Tuesday as always. Of course, Internet Special Reactions returns on Sunday. The qualifying watch along, myself and Katie will be here live at 6 a.m. Right early. 6 a.m. UK time. Seven, sorry, 6 a.m. is the race. So here, seven. No, we're doing like, an hour pre-show. Uh, sorry, no. 7 a.m. 7 a.m. UK time or just before. Uh, so please come and join us. Get your coffees, get your, your breakfasts and whatever you else you need to do and uh, join us uh, for that. Uh, we will be uh, setting that live uh, or scheduling it so you'll be able to see it uh, a little bit earlier than that. But yeah, so come and join us then. Looking forward to it. Should be an interesting qualifying. Ferrari look quick. Red Bull a little bit struggling. Verstappen complaining about a few things. We'll see. It's going to be a very interesting one, isn't it? It is. And thank you again for the podcast award because that is just mega. And I can't believe that we, we actually won, won it. Yeah, we won, we're we in a war winning podcast. And something. I just literally <laughs> blagged my way through this whole thing because I'm so tired. <laughs> I've, I've been blagging for five years, so don't worry about it. <laughs> nice. So, we can say that now we've got the award. <laughs> yeah, thank you for the award. Okay, cool. Thank you, everybody, for watching. Uh, hashtag WTF1 podcast if you want to get involved in the discussion next time. We'll, of course, put stuff on social media as well if you want to ask questions for the next podcast that we do. Thank you, Katie. Thank you, everybody, for watching and listening. Five stars, thumbs up, subscribe if you're new, all that good stuff. And we'll see you on Tuesday, if not. If you're not a Team WTF member, it'll be Tuesday. But if you are a Team WTF member, see you live on Monday. What a, what an outro. Katie's doing some waves. Goodbye. I'm doing some sort of dance. <laughs>